Hello, everybody. Welcome to another session from the RPA Vanguard channel. My name is Andy Menon. In this session, we are going to be talking about how to build a context-based AI chatbot by using open AI APIs and the new uh, form features of UiPath Attended Automation. Let's get started. A few weeks ago, I had released a video on building an AI chatbot uh, using uh, UiPath Open AI Integration Service Connector, right? And you're seeing this here right on the screen. And we covered uh, the build of this uh, automation um, in detail, right? Uh, but uh, this was actually the second application that I had built, right? About a couple of months ago, I had started working on building uh, an AI chatbot by using open A AI's APIs, right? Because I wanted to better understand how the uh, how the context is being maintained by the uh, by the model, right? Um, it's cool that we can go to uh, OpenAI site directly and have a conversation with uh, ChatGPT 3.5, and really, you know, enjoy the experience of how it maintains the context, right? But uh, to me, I wanted to understand how it does that, and uh, so. The application you're going to see in this session was actually the first one that was built, right? And as I was building that application, a couple of good things happened. Uh, one was the UiPath's uh, AI Summit. And when that summit uh, uh, came about and, uh, and we attended that summit, or those of us who have attended that summit uh, know that uh, UiPath you know, covered their open AI uh, integration service connector. So I thought, okay, you know, instead of building something with OpenAI APIs, um, I thought it would be cool to integrate the integration service connector with this uh, application I was building. So the result was this application that you see here open on the screen. Uh, this one is a more nimble, a much more knockdown version of uh, the application that you're going to see today, right? But it used uh, the UiPath uh, Open AI Integration Service Connector, right? But this week, what we are going to talk about is more uh, on how to maintain context in a conversation, right? And also some of the uh, fixes and enhancements uh, that have been made uh, because uh, this particular application had a few glitches uh, that I have already covered in the previous video. Uh, one of the examples is um, in this um, version of the application, you have to put in your uh, context key or your topic key before you start the conversation. Otherwise, uh, you know, your file is going to be saved with this default uh, name or topic, uh, which says you, right? That's less than desirable. So I didn't want that, right? And the other thing, which is most important is that uh, given the nature of open AI integration service connector, we do not have um, uh, you know context maintenance unless you put that context in your prompt, right? So we are going to see how the advanced version of uh, the the chatbot that I'm going to demonstrate in this session um, actually works, right? And how we have made context maintenance a part of that um, a part of that functionality, right? So um, what we are going to do now is run a quick test of this particular uh, you know, application, right? And then compare that later by running a similar test in the new version to see how we have enhanced uh, the, the new application and how context maintenance kind of uh, features as a center point uh, in, in that application. So uh, without further ado, I'm simply going to test uh, the default prompt uh, that's been put in here. All the settings are default. And I'm simply going to ask uh, the chat GPT 3.5 model to give me something about Formula One racing, right? And here it is. I've gotten the explanation back. Now, I'm going to ask it a question without maintaining a context, right? Suppose I ask this question.
Now you see there is no context here. I'm just saying drivers, it can mean anything, but let's see how the, uh, the model responds. You see, there is no context, right? It has forgotten what conversation I was having with it, right? But if you had asked a question uh, like this, list the top three F1 racing drivers, as the second question, it would have given you a much more precise answer. Right? But that's okay. This is the nature of the uh, OpenAI integration service connector because it is meant or tuned more towards integrating that connector with your larger uh, you know, UI path automations, right? An entire workflow where you ask the AI model specific, precise questions, give it all the information. The model comes back with an answer and then you use that answer in your process, right? But if you're using it as a chatbot, then that may not be the right effect uh, or that might not have the right experience rather because every time you ask the follow-up question, you have to put in the context into that question, right? And once you have started using the chatbot for some time, uh, you might get tired of repeating the, the topic in the, uh, you're discussing in every prompt that you're sending. In my case, I wanted to understand how the context-based uh, setup works. And a few months ago, I came across uh, an article in the OpenAI cookbooks, and it had a great example on how to build something that's context-based, right? It, it had a full use case. And I built that out in Python, right? This is the entire code here, right, in Python. And I really liked how it worked. And I said, you know what? This is something that must be built in UiPath, right? This is something that we need to put into UiPath so that our UiPath community users can get to enjoy that experience of a context-based chatbot. And the result of that is the new application that you are going to be seeing in the rest of this video. All right, so I have two applications here. Um, the one that you just saw in the previous section was the AI chatbot with integration service. That application was covered in detail in the previous video. And if you have not watched that video, uh, you might want to go to the RPA Vanguard channel and check this video out. Build an AI chatbot with UI path forms and open AI integration service connector, right? And um, if you have difficulty finding it, you can go to the playlist uh, here in on the RPA Vanguard channel and you will find it um, in the UiPath integration service playlist. I strongly recommend that, uh, that you watch that video because it goes into detail on how that entire application was built, right? And we are not going to be covering most of that in this session, right? So with that, let's now hop back uh, into assistant. And I'm going to start another automation named AI context chatbot. Remember, this is still an attended automation and has to be triggered by an attended user, right? So I'm going to start this up. So here is the new version, right? And you can see that, um, you know, user interface wise, it is markedly different from the previous version, although most of it will definitely make sense to you. Uh, intuitively, and uh, you start with the mood, right? And um, if you have already, you know, um, read about Chat GPT 3.5, uh, that is documentation out there that says that Chat GPT 3.5 does not pay attention to the mood or the tone of the conversation. But I have put it in here already because if I understood this correctly, it's going to be fixed. The, the concept of paying attention to the mood is going to be fixed with ChatGPT4, right? So I don't want to modify this application when ChatGPT4 comes out, right? I don't want to do an extensive modification, right? So although this mood dialogue is in there, you put in the mood or the tone of the conversation, you might not necessarily get the right result, right? because the effectiveness of the conversation is based more on your prompts rather than the mood, right? Uh, but I put it in here. Uh, the next thing is obviously your name, initials, or topic. 
And this is another thing that uh, has been enhanced in this application. In the previous version, as I had mentioned, if you didn't put this in here before you started the conversation, then if you put it in after the conversation, it would not save your history correctly, right? So I have fixed that. I'm going to run the same test that I ran with the previous application, right? And I'm going to test the default prompt, right? By clicking ask. We are getting a similar uh, you know, uh, answer that we got in the previous uh, previous test. Now I am going to post a follow-up question, right? Now this is important. This is where the whole context thing comes into picture, right? I'm going to ask the same question that is pretty much hanging out there in free space, meaning I'm not going to give it the context. I'm not going to give it the topic. I'm simply going to ask it, list the top three drivers or let's say top three champions, name and country only. I'm stressing that I don't need anything else, right? Observe the prompt. It says three champions. It doesn't even say three drivers, right? There is no hint that I'm talking about Formula One racing and I'm asking it for a list and I'm asking it for name and country only, right? So let's see what it comes back with. There it is. You see, it has remembered the context of my conversation. That question has no clue that I'm talking about Formula One racing, that I'm talking about top three champions means top three champion Formula One drivers, nothing. But the model has managed to re reply to me and give me the answer in a form that I require it, right? The name, the country, and the list, right? So this is good, right? Now I can ask another question, right? Add year of latest historic win, please. Let's see, this is interesting. I haven't tested this. This is all ad hoc and I'm going to hit. Beautiful. See, a slight modification and it has put in the last historic uh, uh, win. Now, I did not ask it for the last win because the model is limited historically by year 2021. And then you will get a long apology from the model saying, hey, you know, as an AI model, blah, blah, blah. I can give you the answer. So if you put in the word historic in your prompt, it's going to limit itself to the history, which is year 2021. And it's going to come back with the right answer instead of some apology that you do not need, right? So this is good, right? We have the answers. And uh, now I need to save the uh the chat, right? I, I want to end the chat and I also want to save the conversation uh, history of this chat, right? And as usual is the case, I am going to hit end chat. Please note that I have not put in the context or the topic key and I'm going to hit end. Now here you can see that the child form uh, shows up. I have kept the theme white because uh, or the theme light because dark on dark can cause confusion when I'm demonstrating this video over a recording. But here you see that the, the content of the form is pretty much what you see in the previous, uh, a previous uh, um, application, right? Previous chat chatbot. But here's the change. Uh, it detects that you have not put in your context key, right? Your context or your name or your topic, right? And it gives you the option to save it, right? So I'm going to put in, say, F1 Racing Top 3 Wins. You can put in your name too, uh, right? Um, and uh, you can name it the way you want, but it has to be something meaningful uh, so that you can track your conversation later at a future date, right? And I'm going to hit yes. And here is the chat history. And you can see that the file has been named F1 Racing Top 3 Wins and the date and timestamp, right? which is good because 
I can always come back here and look at the prompts that I used and then probably use these prompts to uh, to apply to another area or another topic, right? Because I feel that these are very lean prompts and they don't use a lot of tokens. And up top, uh, the previous uh, a previous application of the chatbot uh, started with the token usage, right? Here is the total tokens, uh, the total number of uh, tokens that you spent on the prompt and then the response, right? So it's not, uh, not a, a big number because the tokens are definitely in the hundreds, not in the thousands, right? And above that, the enhancement in this application also adds the model parameters that you have used in this application, right? Uh, here you can see that the model is chat, chat GPT 3.5 Turbo, and then the other settings that, you know, that I used for this conversation. But that said, you did not see this anywhere in the user interface. You did not see temperature settings or penalty settings or the max tokens, right? So we'll cover where those settings have been put in or passed into this application when we get into the project details, right? But the, but the gist of the process here or this demonstration is that you can see how this con how this uh, how this AI chatbot maintains the context and gives you the answers even when your questions do not contain the context in them. So this is the project that we saw in action a few moments ago, and uh, I have opened that up in Studio, and uh, the couple of important things that I would like to reiterate again is when you start this project from scratch, please make sure that your studio project has the settings enabled, right? These, these couple of settings enabled. One is the attended automation and the other is the modern design experience. Uh, I have covered the detail in the previous video, but I would like to just emphasize that these are the two things that you would want to enable if you want to use the modern forms experience or the 2023.4 uh, forms experience, right? And once you save, uh, you might have to restart studio. Um, and once you restart your studio, these settings will take effect. The next um, uh, setup or the arrangement of your project would be your packages. And uh, please note, again, I'm emphasizing the automation activities, the system activities, and the form activities must have a minimum version of 23.2. Below that, it won't work, right? So here you can see that the automation activity, the system activities, and the form activities are all uh, version 23.4. And that were the most recent when I, you know, kind of updated my packages the, the last time. Uh, the other important difference between the previous application and this application is this application does not have the UiPath OpenAI integration service connector package. Instead, it has the UiPath web API activities package. And if you have worked with APIs in UiPath automations, then this package must already be familiar to you. And this is the package that is going to make the difference between the previous version and this version of the AI chatbot, right? So once you have added all of these packages to your project, you must be ready to go, right? Going down to the project uh, file structure, right? Uh, I would like to also revisit, uh, you know, one aspect of the project setup that I made a mistake and I have corrected that in a previous video. And please do remember this project was started way before uh, I put out the previous video. So I made some mistakes and I really want to emphasize them here. Um, you can see that I have a folder called chatbot and all my forms, my two forms, the chat form and the history form, right? The parent form and the child form, both are in the same folder, right? And when I started it, it didn't look very, uh, you know, worrisome, but then as I started adding my XAMLs, you see that this whole thing became a big 
file of of code right or or uh, you know all these xamls and all your code files now the problem here is if i look at a particular xaml i have to pause and think okay does this belong to the parent form or does it have to belong to the child form right it's confusing right right so please make a note of this i have covered this in the, in the in the previous video but please put your forms and their associated trigger files in individual folders, different folders, right? That way you don't have to deal with this mess, right? And someday when I'm making a next enhancement to this, uh, to this application, I will clean this up and, and I'll correct this mistake. But again, please do not do something like this. It's going to be a problem later on.